Foreign Day reports. AMP really has a very distinguished history. It has been in existence for almost 170 years and has the largest financial advisor network in Australia. This is precisely the sort of organisation which we would expect to devote substantial resources to compliance. It's older than the gold rush and as Australian as Dame Edna. I look forward to the day when the world leaders think Housewife. For 169 years, AMP has been a trusted source of financial services and advice. But just two days of remarkable evidence at the Royal Commission has threatened to tarnish that legacy. And so by my count, this was the 14th false or misleading statement by AMP to ASIC. And that brings us up to the 15th false or misleading statement, the 16th, 17 false or misleading statements. Were you counting that as one or two? I only counted that as one. Do you think I should count it as two? I think in fairness, Mr Hodge, you should. OK. The 18th false or misleading statement by AMP to ASIC. After an intense grilling, AMP admitted to not only charging customers fees when they received no advice services, but then dressing it up as a mistake to the corporate regulator ASIC. In fact, it was a deliberate policy by the company. Trust has been breached in profound ways between AMP and its key stakeholders. Trust has been breached with the regulator. I suggest trust has been breached with the government. They have said that they basically charge people for services they didn't provide and they have admitted to statements that were misleading uh, to ASIC and to their, to their own customers. And this is deeply distressing. And these types of this type of behaviour can attract penalties which include jail time. That's how serious these things are. AMP has issued an apology and has paid back almost $5 million to affected customers. But now AMP's 750,000 shareholders are suffering significant financial pain as a result of the scandal. Those investors have seen the stock fall 6.5% since Tuesday morning and almost a billion dollars wiped off the value of the company. AMP is owned by more mum and dads than probably most other stocks in the market. So this is why this news is particularly terrible for them. Market analyst Lafatani Satiriu has been warning clients against investing in AMP for two years. So we issued a warning because the compliance costs were, were, were going up. That is a big difference between there are some things wrong in the business that we're reviewing and we're spending more money on doing it to openly lying and almost having a disregard for the regulator. Jeff Morris is another onlooker who's not surprised by the revelations at the Royal Commission. The former financial planner blew the whistle on misconduct at the Commonwealth Bank's financial planning division 10 years ago. The incredible thing about it, though, is that ASIC is colluding in this fairy story on the part of the institutions that this was all just a big accident and a series of unfortunate mistakes. It wasn't. It was deliberate industry policy. He says ASIC has been asleep at the wheel and that the industry has contempt for the corporate regulator. ASIC is an absolutely useless regulator. In fact, uh, personally, I believe they're worse than useless because the existence of ASIC led a lot of people to believe that there was some element of consumer protection uh, in financial services. It actually misled people to believe that they were operating in a market that was more regulated and protected than in fact it was. ASIC today declined to comment further on its investigation into AMP, but said it had received thousands of documents and examined 18 staff. It also said that making false or misleading claims to ASIC could result in civil or criminal sanctions. But its critics say the regulator rarely uses its strongest tools. The strongest message going out to the regulated community is, of course, when significant fines are imposed or, indeed, when the wrongdoer actually sees the inside of a jail. I think there is a significant issue about whether the existing enforcement powers are being used in the way that sends the strongest message out to the regulated community that we have a, to a tough cop on the beat. The fees for no service issue was back before the Royal Commission today, but with another institution facing the heat. You're aware of the fees for no service issues that Commonwealth Bank has had? Yes, I am. The Commonwealth Bank has handed back more than $118 million to customers who were charged fees for advice they didn't receive. And you know that Commonwealth Bank group entities have charged more fees for no service than any other financial services entity in the country? Do you know that? I do know that. 
it would be the gold medalist if ASIC was handing out medals for fees for no service, wouldn't it? Yes. There are now more than 25,000 financial advisers in Australia, 40% more than when Jeff Morris blew the whistle on the industry. He believes that along with the rise of advice, there's also been a rise in misconduct and that the Royal Commission has only scratched the surface. All the people who brought these scandals about are still knocking about in the industry and still doing the same sort of things. And they may have been driven underground a bit, but that, that basic philosophy of ripping off the customer is still very much alive and well. Lauren Day reporting, and AMP declined 730's request for an interview, but our offer remains open. Now, US President Donald